just look at that tread pattern that this thing leaves in the sand. <laughs> it's huge. So I just posted project 275 plus phase one and I called that my preliminary test because I'm really still getting used to this bike. So that was on Saturday. I'm doing two just easy days of riding to recover from my tests and really getting the bike dialed in, getting used to it. The seat post is no longer slipping. Finally got that squared away. I just had to coat it with some extra uh, paste, the uh, fiber grip paste. And one thing I did this morning, which really paid off, is I slid the dropouts completely forward. So there's actually a screw inside here you gotta twist. And I'll, I'll go over that more in my review. So I'm gonna do my first real in-depth review on this bike. Uh, hopefully this weekend, but I'll go into that. Uh, but this has shortened the wheelbase by at least half an inch, which has made the bike more nimble, a little bit more playful, more fun to ride. So I think that the cross-country laps that I'll do this week are going to be a little bit more valid because one, the seat post is going to stay the same. At the end of that first one, I realized the seat post had slipped like an inch and that can really affect your power. So I'll get, uh, I'll get another lap in. So, and also I'm, I'm getting used to the bike and the fact that I shortened the wheelbase, all that I think is going to produce a better lap time. So tomorrow I'm gonna to get out and do a cross country lap. I, actually, I'm gonna do two, uh, two different sections. So uh, the cross country time is what I'm really focusing on. And some people made a comment about this and I think it's a valid point. Right now I'm focusing on speed but that's not really what plus bikes are about for cross country. Now, I, you know, I still see these tests where in enduro type courses, plus bikes uh, sometimes are faster, but for cross country, speed is not the name of the game for plus bikes. Uh, again, I'll really talk about where I feel like this bike fits in, but it's not a cross country race bike with the plus tires. Now, the 29er tires on this particular frame Heck yeah, it would be a race bike and it would be a pretty comfortable race bike with the 124 fork on it and not super steep geometry So that's coming up in a week or two and I'm really curious to see what the weight of the bike is with the uh, with the 29er tires. So again, I just want to do a quick vlog today to kind of let you know how the project is going and I'll tell you it It's taken me a little used to getting used to a hardtail again uh, plus tires do not take the place of full suspension. I'll let the cat out of the bag right there. Again, I, I'm making kind of a list of notes of what I want to mention about plus bikes and all kinds of stuff, but they do not take the place of full suspension and I'm a full suspension guy. Now, could I could I have this bike as my, you know, as a an option to ride? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Um but it is a hardtail, and but you know a lot of people like hardtails. A lot of people don't want the maintenance of full suspension or the cost of full suspension. Again, these are all things that I'll really get into when I go into more discourse about the bike and, and 27 plus in general. Uh, so I'll, I'll get these tests done this week, and 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 then so first cross country day will be on the plus bike, and then I'll switch back over to my. 29er and by the way, I looked at my 29er last night <laughs> Those tires look like cyclocross tires. It's crazy, but I just I just jumped on it and pedaled it around for five minutes and Holy cow that RKT 9 is such a fast and nimble bike It'll be it'll be really interesting to see what it feels like trail riding on that thing again after being on this 27.5 plus I did order rim tape today and valve stems from the bike shop so I am going to attempt to convert these tires to tubeless. Maybe a piece of cake, maybe not. I don't know, they are tubeless ready tires. I don't know how the rims are gonna do as tubeless, but I'm definitely gonna give it a shot. I, I probably have to wait till this weekend because I think it's gonna be a few days before that tape comes in. So when I do my cross country testing this week, uh, they'll, they'll still have tubes. But you know, that's a, it's a good, it's another good test to see what my times are on this bike after I convert it to tubeless. So anyway, so I wanna say one more thing for this video is, this is the funnest hardtail 
I have ever ridden and definitely funnest hardtail I've ever descended on. Uh, I'm starting to feel it on this bike. I'm starting to get it and really attack the descents. I get the same feeling that I get on a trail bike as far as wanting to attack a descent. It's hard to describe, but if you mountain bike, you probably know what I mean. You get that feeling on this bike. Never had that on the hardtail. I'm starting to really throw this bike around. And I tell you, shortening that wheelbase a little bit, huge difference. Um, really good option on this bike. You can make it stable by sliding it out, push that drop out in and make it more nimble. And uh, also I am, I didn't mention this before, I am going to uh, wear my GoPro when I do my testing, not the whole laps, but just to kind of show some riding footage and try to get a buddy out here to film me while I'm riding this bike. It's kind of hard to do when I do it on my lunch break to coordinate that. So yeah, that's the end of this video now. Uh, diving into the cross country laps uh, this week, hitting, hitting cross country hard this week. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.